Hi, and welcome to Watercolor with Sonia. I uh, did some rocks the other day, and I've put the image away now, and I found it was very dark. So I thought I would like to try a bit of a different process on a little bit smoother paper. I was using Arches, and this is Canson. Um, and just see what a different rocks could be. I'm just looking, while I'm talking to you, I'm just looking for my other brushes that I've put around here somewhere. As always, I put my brushes away and then they seem to disappear on me. So always have your um, material ready and at hand when you're actually going to do this. Because otherwise you, like me, right now, will get confused and it won't be as an easy process if you don't have all your material with you. Now that's no excuse for me because I have tons of brushes. Got my water. Now I have my brushes. And this is a very small little piece here. So it's say four by four. So I just want to try a few different colors again based on some of the things that I had talked about in my other picture. So um, I'm looking, and you can't see this at the moment, I'm looking at um, a bit of pebbles on the beach. I have kind of made them very uniform sized, uh, but this one's probably a little bit bigger. That's a little bit bigger. Let's make this focus, the focus area. I'm going to start off with um, a little bit of yellow ochre. How's that? That's more new gamboge. So let's get that to the right color. Um, and you could easily mix this with just a little bit of permanent rose and um, permanent rose and a little bit of Hansa yellow or a new gamboge just to get a little bit more of that orangey brownish tone to it. And then we'll get some other rocks in here. Although on the beach, they look to me a lot lighter. And so I've got to be careful. Uh, one of the things that I did actually talk to you about was testing out your paints. So, and I also haven't made pre-wet this because in my other project, I pre-wet it. I uh, started dropping in more of what the background was and I only had a few rocks. So this time we're changing that up a bit and I'm actually just using little bits of color here that I happen to have on my palette. So just a tiny hint of gray and let's go with another darker gray over here. A little gray there. Why don't we just make a little bit more gray on the background here. I Last time I used a little bit of purple even. Put that in there. Uh, what else could we use? How about a little bit of hint of green? Kind of a greenish gray. A tiny bit of blue, but you have to be careful with the blue, right? So it's more like a blue gray. How about a little bit of um, kind of more burnt sienna here? Could even add a little bit more. It was red wood from bits of cedar that are on the, but I didn't put any of that in there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of red too. Yes, permanent rose. It's not not quite what I would like. I would like a little bit, um, yeah, kind of like that. There. A little bit more rustic, rusty. Let's put a little bit of that in there to kind of mimic that. Maybe there's some pieces of wood and stuff around the rock. And I'm not really paying attention to any particular brush stroke. Just playing around, getting some colors in. Let's see if I can get, I'm going to just use a different brush uh, because it's not good to have the same brush and then find that you've maybe contaminated the coloring. This is a Viridian again. That may be a little too glass-like comparably. So when we add a little bit of gray over top of that, Wouldn't that be nice if we could find a color jade rock like that? 
All right, so now um, I have a little bit other colors here. Let's just put a little bit more gray in here. That was a nice light grayish warm kind of color, so let's put that over here. Maybe bring that into the under in between the rocks. I could certainly darken a couple of these rocks up, but at the moment I'm just gonna do the first layer. And I'd like a little bit more of that color. Let's see if I can get that in here. And around it here. And maybe a little bit more of this grayish green in between here. Okay, so different from my other... Um, oh, and I also, if you can notice, I also drew these shapes with uh, first with pencil and then with ink. There's a recommendation that that way it gives you a little bit more um, shadow but a finer shadow than what I had on my other pro project. And I was just going to find you what size of ink pen that was, fine liner. And of course it's hiding again, just underneath here somewhere. So I would say it's 0.5. You could probably even go with lighter, depending on how dark or light your rocks are. But this is certainly different from the colors we used before. Now. I had talked about with the mixing here, I'm just going to put them here, I think you can see the cups. I was using this sepia, uh, almost a black, and that is very strong, and you've got to be careful with that. So I prefer, this time around, to try and go with the Payne's Grey. Let's just see if it's here. And uh, touch it up a bit more, there we go. Get that a little darker. So we can get some, I gotta reactivate my, cause there's shadows in here. So we can start by adding some shadows into some of these rocks in between. Be very careful. Cause what's nice is the gray will pick up the other color too. But if you're too strong um, going around here, we're gonna lose all that nice shadow effect eventually on the rocks. So we'll put a little bit more in here around these base rocks here. Let me cover that one up completely. Okay, um, looking at all this, the shadow was down on this side. So, we haven't done a lot. I'm just going to put a little more shadow over here, maybe. Let that come down there. A little bit maybe in here. Because what we're trying to do is trying to get that idea that the rocks are on top of each other or uh, there's a lower, lower layer. Um, that These rocks are higher and so therefore they're casting a shadow on the other areas. And see what's happening now. I'm starting to dry brush and I want a little bit smoother cast shadow. Let's put that in there too. Get that around there. Okay. And you could do some negative painting as well. Just putting in the shape so that it looks like there's a lighter rock somewhere there. Okay. Um, I'm put a little bit more in here. So again, very light, starting to look like more than just circles. But now we have to create that those uh, particular designs and stuff like that. Whereas yesterday we spattered over everything. This today, we're gonna use a little bit of paper and kind of shield the areas that we wanna spatter so we're not catching spatter everywhere. And then we'll do some fine lines and stuff. So again, this is a little bit less loose. And let's put another piece of paper over here so that we're not going to spatter everything. And when I was spattering yesterday, we were using a shell and my toothbrush and 
Let's see if we can get some coloring in here. Today I'm going to use uh, a bit more burnt sienna. So in the other video I tended to show you more of the color mixing and today we're just kind of I'm just showing you a process more. Now I can, look at how much spray is coming out everywhere else except for it. Oh so I'm going to try it this way and let's see if that works better. Okay, I'm going to take a little darker here. Trying to figure out where that spray is actually because most of it's com coming off. You can hardly see it. Okay, let's move that away for a second so you can see what that looks like. Okay. Not bad. In terms of texturing, it's quite light. Um, now, there's also the method of actually taking your brush and just dabbing it on here. So let's try that. I'm going into my gray and I'm more blue than gray and let's go in there and I can just maybe add a few little designs now there's also the sponge which I had mentioned whoops that's the magic eraser that's the sponge so you could take your sponge wet it squeeze it out and it certainly doesn't have to be this big it just depends what you're and you could go in and you could do that now what I noticed when I did this yesterday is that this created a lot of wet wetness on my paper and I wasn't anticipating that here we're just gonna add a little more good nice texture there so just be prepared if you want that texture to um, to know that you might get a lot of moisture with it there we go add a little bit more of that orange in there So that has given you more texture, it's still not giving us any depth at this point. So now we have to go back in with a smaller brush and I wouldn't I'll try a different brush here. I was using a zero like this and it's, it's more now about coming in and thinking about the individual rock, like for example this rock, where, where did I do this, this rock. So a lot of shadow in here. It's a little bit more blue. Um, just trying to wet the brush. Find a bit more bluish color here by adding some phthalo to this. I could go straight to ultramarine blue too. Um, and I set up here. Well, let's do this one because this looks a little bit more blue. So now I'm adding some shadow around that side of that rock. And maybe there's a little bit of a kind of dimple there maybe I'll add a little bit more on the edge when you do this you're gonna get a very hard line around there there's a couple ways that you can fix that take another brush wet brush and then just soften it up right or um, you can uh, you know I noticed I just didn't leave any white again Um, you can just take it, wet it first, and then add little bits. But you have to be careful. It, this is such a small piece that if you don't add the depth to it right away and the small lines, you, you can really see that it's uh, impacted. So let's add some more sh deep shadow in here around these. This would all be by high doing color darker color around the other color it's more of a negative space painting so that you can get better depth let's add a few little accents to those rocks so now we have a little bit more depth especially over there here not so much we need a little bit more depth by adding more dark color into there and some shadow And so you're, you're taking your time and really working on each rock individually to get some nice designs. You can also, like we did here with a softness, um, I'm just going to soften this out here to make it look a little bit more realistic. Add a little bit more of that blue tone on the outside. I could even add a little bit in here to give it more interest. 
definitely need a bit more shadow on that side to show that it's not just a round rock. And I could use definitely more dark in there. The, long, the more often you do that, though, remember that you're going to get a muddier consistency. Um, you can add some purple. Just looking for my purple color for a shadowy color tone, which also can help. Looks grayish. And add a little bit more texture again, a bit more tone. Doesn't have to be that dark. Let's go to our blue again. And this is ultramarine blue or cobalt. Cobalt, I think. Let me add a little bit more cobalt in here. How about some cobalt over here? Maybe make that a lot darker. How about putting some more cobalt on this one here? Since it's lower down. Maybe a little bit darker in here. Um, so bit by bit you go through and you actually add your shadows so that you can actually get a real rock plan. And it has to have some depth, right? So the blue will help to, um, especially if it's a cool blue, will help to create that depth. Then there's also more uh, spattering that can be done. I could even throw some salt on here, but because I didn't do a lot of wetting around this area, salt is not going to really do a lot of texture at this point. So I can just by just by tapping. You could also take a gel pen and you know just make some lines to give it that curvature, so it's uh, looking a little bit less flat. On this one, there was actually a shadow in this area where it was kind of chipped out. I probably shouldn't have used that circle of felt there. That wasn't necessary. Because it looks more like it should be another rock on top of the rock. As opposed to that. Add a little bit more shadow there. Alright, let's go back to my scallop shell. And see if I can do a little bit more spattering. I'm going to try it with a regular brush and see if that does that actually work. I should be covering stuff up, but let's just try that with a little bit of spattering there. That's well, working pretty good, actually. So you could take that and just touch it up and push the spatter around a little bit so it looks a little bit more natural. Thinking about the shadows and the depth of the rock. That's the hardest part, getting a little bit of that depth going for the rock so that you know that there is it's just not a flat surface. There's other things going on, more shadow. That helps to create some depth too. The blue again. So a little bit of blue here, put a little bit of blue down there. Okay, is there anything we can do? Darkening anything in particular? Add a little bit more color to it or a little bit more purple to it. Um, let's add a little bit more burnt sienna maybe to this one. How about over here? Give that some really good color right into the. That helps a bit. Here a little bit. Don't want to overdo it with the brown versus the blue. Let's get a little bit of purple in there. The other thing I, you remember we talked about, you could also texture by doing a little bit of tissue. A little bit more purple. And a little 
little bit maybe more green. Not sure if that's Viridian or Olive. Let's see here. This is Viridian. Yeah, there it is. So now the Viridian can be used to actually create some darker tones just by dropping in the green. So you can practice with that too. That's another way to change and de just give it a bit of a neutralized color. Although that looks more olive -y. I'm not sure that looks so realistic versus the cool color here because we had some viridian in there already. If you were doing water, you could possibly, let's just see here, if you took some of viridian here across and just laid it over to kind of make it look like the water is glistening over the surface and some of them are a little higher or not. A little turquoise would actually, cobalt turquoise could help with that feeling of that water, maybe a little bit more. A little bit more blue. Oops, that's too green. Uh, maybe a little too green for the water. But that gives you an idea. So now it's kind of looking like it's actually under the water depending on what type of water you were actually having there. I'm just going to put a little phthalo blue in there and see if that's it's going to stay. Yes, yeah, the phthalo blue is a green shade so therefore it's staying more greenish. Let's put a little bit more across here. Um, let's do a little bit of cobalt and see if I can get that being a little bit more blue. Now the more I add to this it gets a little bit too dark and muddy. So be careful with that. So that can give you a little bit better idea of how to create your rocks and enjoy a different aspect of our process. I, you could even go back in here and spatter again when it's completely dry. I wouldn't do it before because it's just going to blend in with everything that we've done because it's now quite wet. And remember to clean your edges so that you don't end up having that come in too. Again, if you're feeling like it's a little too much, there's also the opportunity of taking wax paper and putting it down and leaving it. And you might get some textures that you weren't expecting, which is always interesting. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little demo of more rocks. And then in, we ended up doing it with a little bit of water over top. So thanks for watching.